landslide last time for Tracy. Let's be positive. I'm voting for it. Well, I would vote for it, but I, call, I can't vote for it because I'm not an elector. But... Come positive. on. Let's be positive. Just stop right there. No negativity. Let's be positive. LBP. Let's be positive. Oh, I love this bit. It highlights my week. Matt Gunn joins us out of twice. We're going to be positive. Let's start with the grand final. Say something positive to Eels fans, mate. Bad luck, Eels fans. <laughs> I tell you what, Martin, I... I, I loved the grand final, and I'll tell you what I liked about it. It was an absolute example to the New Zealand Warriors and the Canterbury Bulldogs about what a quality rugby league team is. Everything they're doing there at the moment is top-notch. Yeah. They've lost 11 games in the last three seasons. Martin, our sides are lucky to have scraped 11 wins together. They dominated the game. The Eels... Looked like they competed for 10 minutes. They were exhausted after 10, and it was all downhill from there. And bad luck to them. But the Panthers were fantastic. Yeah. They didn't do anything wrong. That's Look, that's what got me more than anything. You know, and the commentators were quite clear about it. The perfect game of football. I remember the Roosters. I can't remember what grand final it was. Maybe it was against Melbourne a few years ago. They played what I thought was the best half of rugby. 2018 was it there, locked in Stadium. Yeah, the best half of rugby league I'd ever seen. It was just errorless. And... It was, it was. I mean, you love your league as much as anyone else, mate. The defence is what got me as much as the attack. They just smothered them. Oh, that, the Parramatta, it's not like they weren't trying to play well. And, I mean, I, I think if you look at the stats, they turned out pretty even, really, except for the score. But it, 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 it wasn't about what Parramatta did. It's what the Penrith Panthers didn't allow them to do. And you're dead right. It was every aspect of the game and the speed of the game. The speed out of dummy half was phenomenal. I'll tell you what, I've never been the biggest fan of young Cleary. But, you know, really, if you can take on a game like that and be absolutely neutral, apart from not wanting Parramatta to win, it didn't matter to me who won. No, same, mate. His ability to almost be through the line, at least at the line of the defence, before he passes... He's such, his timing is amazing, and that's what gives the Panthers so much on attack. You know, nobody actually knows up until they're almost making the tackle whether or not they need to on Cleary. He was just fantastic, but all of them were. Yeah, look, so it was I'm, a really I, good game. I fell in love with Nathan Cleary during COVID, where five girls came around to do a TikTok, and he said that they came around to wait for an Uber. And I just thought, Nath, really, come on, son. I mean, if you're going to come out, this is like my children. If you're going to come out and lie to your father, at least come up with a lie. Five people aren't allowed in an Uber. You know, everyone knows that, don't no. you? I mean, there's a, <laughs> so, I mean, there's, exactly. a, there's a limit of, there's, and especially in COVID times. All right, then. So the great thing to be positive about here, though, is Warriors fans and Bulldogs fans, we've got clubs that have the same infrastructure in place. <clears throat> we've got clubs that not only the young people are winning, but the senior team... <clears throat> We've got development programs in place. We've got two Bulldogs in the Australian yes, Rugby League side, our two best players, Burton and Addo Carr. Okay. We win 2-1. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's true. I mean, look, you know, and, and we're all making the jokes about it, the one New Zealand, one New Zealand warrior in the squad and all of that. But again, what does it say? Costa was on the program earlier, Matt, saying it, saying it clearly. I said this to Cameron George during the year, and he got all, you know, upset about it and accused me of all mm, kinds of things. Mm. The best yep. players don't want to play for you, mate. It's pretty bloody obvious, isn't it? No, he summed it up perfectly, Costo, actually. I mean, there are Warriors in Fiji, Scotland, and four in the Tonga squad. But the best New Zealand players, Martin, they're nowhere near no, the joint. They don't want to know. They don't want to play know. over no. here. They don't want to live in Auckland, and they know where Auckland is. They've mostly got <laughs> families in Auckland. Most of them are from there, and they don't want to go and play no. there. Okay. Look, it's a pretty sad situation. I'll tell you what, Sean Johnson, if someone's talking about Sean Johnson, I'm not sure what the headline should be. But he must be absolutely devastated sitting back, reading this squad, and seeing top knot. No, oh, I know. How did the key How the hell has he, he, forward. How has he managed to get a, a place? I mean, when he left the Warriors, his career was over. I know he's I know he's playing first grade in that, but is that the this is what my frustration is. Is that the best we've got? Do you like that Australian squad? You've got thirteen debutants. It wouldn't matter who you pick, mate. You could pick anybody to play for Australia and they'll turn up and play. But you look at the Kiwi squad and you go, is that the best we've got? We actually have to recycle you? 
Kieran Foran. He left the Warriors a loser, and he ended up back with the Bulldogs as a million dollar failure. Yeah, that yeah that didn't work for years and years. But he's just he's around the corner from being fit. He's almost <laughs> right. ready to play. <laughs> You know, it's like it's like the Warriors. Next year's his year. Yeah, that's a next, next year. year yeah. Believe yeah. you yeah. me. Yeah. Next year's Kieran Foran's year. I was a little bit surprised, but Johnson must look at that and go, "I'm not better than him." Well, the news stories are well, that, that, that you know, Sean Johnson, you know, devastated to have missed out or something. That this is his. No, what was it? His his international era is coming to a close. No, the, the door was shut on it. it. As far as the Warriors go, next year he played six games this year, didn't he? Is that it? Oh, we won six already. But... If your international career is coming to a close and Kieran Foran takes a potential spot that you could have taken, it's closed. Let's be mean. Let's be positive. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just being Costa. Let's be positive, Honest. though. Let's be positive about Manchester City because we can't be positive about United and we can't be positive about Liverpool because you're in the same boat that we are. This Manchester City side, mate, they've already won the title seven games in, haven't they? Even though they're not on top. Yeah, they're not on top, but I mean the the performances they put in. It, it, it could have been eight, yeah, or ten. Yes, three today, couldn't it? Easy. I mean, twenty-two shots on goal they had. I know, I know. <laughs> ten accurate shots, <laughs> but twenty-two possible shots, and 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 you got within three goals. The defence could be an issue, given that you guys scored three goals. Mm. And I just want to say, if you send me a text and says at least we scored three goals, just remember. I'm not we. No. I'm Liverpool. <laughs> All right. Let's All right. Ta- let's talk about the Women's Rugby World Cup. To be positive about this, they've had, and not that it's not the opening series, they had the welcome series. There are 12 teams here. I still maintain, Matt, that, you know, if anyone stopped and thought about this and thought, there's 12 teams, it's a fledging tournament, okay? You're trying to establish this, get a customer base, get a lot of support here in New Zealand. Put the bloody thing on total free to air. I know that it's some of it's on News Hub, but no one watches anything delayed these days. And in this economic climate, to actually say to to fans and also to say to an audience that you don't have yet, oh, you're going to have to go and pay extra to see something that you haven't even grown to like yet. How does that make economic sense? Well, I don't think it makes economic sense. I think the whole tournament won't make any economic uh, headway. I mean, the bottom line is this. 30,000 plus for the opening day. That's the sales I read last week. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now, the biggest crowd the biggest crowd for a women's sporting event was 2016, 2008, under-17 football World Cup, yep. 16,162. The Silver Ferns haven't broken 9,000 fans at a game. The bottom line is this, Martin, as much, and look, I'm not, I'm not talking with any disrespect, but sometimes I'm sick and tired of being told what I should do when, in fact, the majority of people don't want, and, and they're not watching women's sport, okay? They're not watching. Now, I don't know why they're not watching, yeah, but isn't that I'm the question? Isn't that, that the down. question? Isn't that what Sport New Zealand should be doing? Instead of telling us to be watching, why, why shouldn't they be answering the question, why aren't women watching? Why aren't women watching women's sport? Well, this is what I say to my wife often when we talk about the fact that women com- continue to complain about not being paid the same as men. I say to my wife, well, why don't the women running business pay women more? I mean, there's an opportunity for women to be paid more. We've got a female prime minister. There's females running major corporate businesses all over this country. The question isn't, are they being paid more or the same? The question is, why don't women support other women to see them at sport or pay them more or deliver whatever it is they needed? They run the world. I say this all the time. Women actually run, run the world, the world. Mate, because they run the world why don't mate. they go on strike until they do get paid more i don't understand it at all i want them to get paid more i certainly want my wife to get paid more then i could work less <laughs> what man wouldn't want their wife to be paid more no, the question exactly. is why don't women pay them more my question is, is Tracy going to... why don't women go to sport? Well, why don't they go to sport? Because they don't want to watch other women. They want to watch boys is why they do. Because that's why most women well, watch sport is because they like what they're looking at as much as they like they the team that's playing. It's unpopular opinion. It is unpopular. This is unpopular of course opinion. it's unpopular. It's like saying you're not sure about global warming or whatever else it might be. The facts remain. If women wanted to go to see other women play sport, 
They would. Guess what? They would. They have they every would. opportunity they would to do, do it. it. That's exactly no it. No one's stopping them. And you're dead right about where it's broadcast. If you want to prove the value of something, firstly, you have to prove the value of something. Let as many people as possible watch at minimal cost and see if that attracts them. Because if you can't get 10,000 people to a netball game, one of the most popular sports in New Zealand, how are you going to get thousands of people to pay for it on Spark who also don't know what they're doing with sport? So there's the question of the day. It's not whether we want them to be successful. Do they want other women to be successful? And I pose that question to all the women listening. Matt, thank you so much for that. Not a popular point of view, but sage point made.